Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. In this video, we are going to learn about what is unique constraint and this video is a continuation of previous two videos. In video number 71, I have already discussed about what is data integrity constraint and what are all the types of constraint and in what scenario we need to use these constraint. In video number 72, I have discussed about not null constraint and its related interview question. As a continuation of that, in this video, we are going to learn about what is unique constraint and what are all the interview questions with specific to unique constraint. So basically, these are the things we are just going to learn in this video. What is unique constraint? How to define a unique constraint? Once we have defined the unique constraint, where to go and check the metadata information related to the unique constraint and how to enable and disable a constraint and finally, how to drop unique constraint. And I have already covered few unique constraint related videos. Those questions I will share and the link of those videos I will give in the description. Now let us start with what are the types of constraint. So here is the list of constraints available in Oracle that is not null, unique key constraint, primary key constraint, foreign key constraint, check and reference constraint. In the previous video we have seen about not null constraint and in this video I am going to cover about unique key constraint. In the upcoming videos we will see about the rest of the constraints. Now let us start with what is unique constraint. So here is the snippet from Oracle documentation. As you can see here, a unique key constraint requires that every value in a column or set of columns to be unique. Once a unique key constraint is defined on a column, we will not be able to insert a duplicate value into that particular column. However, we will be able to insert null values. And again, one more very important point is that a unique key constraint can be defined on a single column or it can be defined on a group of column. That is called a composite unique key constraint. Okay. Now let us see how to define a unique key constraint. But before that, let us see what are the real time examples where we will actually use these unique key constraint. So here are a few examples, the usernames in a user table, employee IDs in an employee table, a product code column in an inventory table, email address in a customer table, and an account number in a banking system. Here are the list of potential columns where we can define a unique key constraint. Now let us see how to define a unique key constraint or what are the different methods by which a unique key constraint can be defined on a single column or on a group of columns. So here is a simple table I am going to create a student table with four columns serial number, department, name and date of join. So let us say I want to create a unique constraint on serial number column. The very simplest and easiest method is to specify a keyword called unique as part of the column definition. For example if I want to make the serial number column as a unique column I just need to mention the keyword unique. So let me create the table. As you can see here the table is created. Now the table is created with the unique constraint on serial number column. This is one way of definition. In this way we are not specifying any constraint name. So what Oracle will do is Oracle will automatically provide a system defined constraint name. That, that name we will see later but right for now you can just keep it in mind that we are not giving any constraint name instead Oracle will just give a system defined constraint name. Okay, let me just drop and recreate the table by providing a name for the constraint. So I'm just copying the same table definition. So here what we can do optionally we can give a name for this constraint. You can say constraint. You can just provide a name for the constraint. Let's say I want to create a unique constraint on serial number column. So now I'm just going to create this table. So in this case also we are creating a unique constraint on serial number column. However, this method differs from the first method in only one way. Here we are providing a name for the constraint. However, in the first method we are not providing the name. Oracle will automatically create a system defined name. Okay. These two methods are creating a unique key constraint on a particular column. This method of definition is called a column level definition. That is, I am specifying or I am creating unique key constraint on this particular column and I am defining this constraint as part of the column definition itself. There is one more way to define this column. So I am just copying the same column create table syntax. Instead of defining the constraint or specifying the constraint at a column level, what you can do is you can specify the definition at a table level like this. So you can say at the end of the table creation script you can say constraint. You can give a constraint name unique of which specific column you want to 
create the unique key constraint. For example, in this case, I want to create the unique key constraint on serial number column. Let me just drop this table and recreate the table now. So now you can see we are creating a constraint on serial number column. However, this definition we have given at the end of the table creation script, not as part of the column definition, like the way we did in the second method. Okay, the advantage of defining a constraint definition at a table level is we can create a composite constraint. That is, we can make a combination of column to be unique. Let me just show you the syntax. Suppose if I want to make the combination of serial number and department to be unique, then it is not possible to define such constraint at the column level definition. Those should be defined only at a table level, something like this. So in this case, I want to specify the combination of serial number column and the department to be unique. Let me just drop this table and recreate the table. So now we have created a table with the composite unique constraint on two columns. That is the combination of serial number and department should be unique. Okay. Just to recap our learning. So here are the four ways by which we can create the unique constraint. The first method is by specifying a unique keyword as part of the column definition. Second method is also as part of the column definition. However, we can provide a user defined constraint name by specifying the constraint key followed by the name of the constraint. The third method, instead of defining at a column level, we are defining the constraint at a table level. That is our definition will be at the end of the table. So the third method and second method are exactly same. There is no difference. The only difference is in the second method, we are defining as part of the column. The third method, the constraint definition goes as part of the table. The advantage of defining at a table level is we can define a composite constraint, something like this. In the fourth method, we are creating a composite constraint. That is the combination of serial number and department column should be unique. Okay, now let us see how to check the metadata information related to the constraint, whatever you have just created. Let me just drop this table again. So there are two table actually where we will get the metadata information related to this constraint. The first table is user constraint. So this table will give all the constraint related information for a table. For example, I want to know all the constraints of the table student where table name equal to let's say student. Right now there is no constraint okay because i have just dropped the table and there is another uh, metadata uh, table called user constraint columns okay so now let me just recreate the table now the table is created now let us check the constraint name now if you see there is a constraint name provided by oracle the reason is i have not mentioned any constraint name as part of my definition that is why oracle automatically provided a constraint name something like sys followed by c a random number here so the user constraint table will give the information about the constraint on which table whether it is enabled or disabled and few other information and this user constraint column table will give the constraint on which particular column for example in this case this constraint is defined on serial number column of student table okay now let us drop this table and recreate the table by specifying a user defined constraint name. I'm creating the table. In this case, we provided a constraint name. So now let us check our metadata information again. So now if you see the constraint name is no more a system defined constraint name. Instead, it is a user defined constraint name, whatever we specified as part of this column definition. Same thing goes to the user constraint column table also. You can see the constraint name. So the advantage of providing the name is by specifying the name actually we'll be able to search in the metadata table. That is one advantage. Okay. Now let me just drop this table again. I've just dropped the table. Now I'm going to uh, create the third method. Third method is also almost going to be the same. There is no difference. So here also we can see the constraint name is there. And in the user constraint column table also you can see the constraint name and in in all the first second and third method we just created the constraint on a single column that is why it is showing only the single column here that is the constraint is created on serial number column now let me just drop this table and now let us execute our fourth script where 
we have actually created a composite unique constraint table is created so let me check the constraint table so you can see here we created a uk underscore s invoke constraint which is a unique constraint which is on a table name student which is an enabled status now let us check the constraint column metadata table you can see here since this is a composite constraint that is we created this constraint on a combination of column that is more than one column that's why we are seeing like more than one column is specified and the order in which we created the constraint on this column so just to recap our learning so here is the two table the first table is user constraint and the second table is user constraint columns now let us see how to enable and disable a constraint by default when a table is created or by default when a constraint is created it will be in an enabled mode only but for some reason if you want to enable or disable it later you can do using the alter script let us see how to do that i am creating the table with unique constraint on serial number column by default when a constraint is defined or when a constraint is created it will be created in an enabled mode that we can check in the user constraint table you can see the status column by default when we create a constraint it will be in an enabled mode but for some reason you want to create the table with the constraint in a disabled mode you can do that by specifying a keyword called disable let me just drop this table and recreate the table again so now i am recreated the table with the disable keyword now if you check the user constraint metadata table you can see that the table is created with the constraint in a disabled mode now if you want to enable it again you can do that by using the alter table script let's say alter table student enable constraint now you need to provide a constraint name if you have created with the user defined constraint name you can give your constraint name otherwise you can get the constraint name from the user constraints table so now what i am doing i am just enabling the constraint now the table is enabled altered with the constraint enabled now if you go and check the user constraint table you can see that the status is enabled same thing goes to disabling the constraint also suppose if you want to disable this constraint just say alter table table name disable constraint constraint name let me execute this statement now the table is altered now if you go and check the constraint will be in a disabled mode just to recap our learning by default if you want to disable a constraint as part of a creation you can specify the disable keyword as part of the definition later if you want to enable or disable you can use this alter table script as mentioned here okay finally once constraint is created and for some reason if you don't want the constraint to be present how to drop the constraint so now let us see how to drop the constraint suppose i don't want this specific constraint so what we can do we can use the alter table script you just say drop constraint constraint name the table is altered now if you go and check the constraint related metadata table that uh, constraint will not be there even you can just go and check in your uh, table definition also so you can just go and check your constraint right now there will not be any constraint here okay so just to recap our learning uh, the alter script to drop the constraint is alter table table name drop constraint and constraint name i have already covered few unique constraint related videos the link of those videos i'll give in the description so you can see here the first question is can we create a primary key not null and unique key constraint on the same column the second question is we use unique index or unique constraint to enforce the uniqueness and what is the difference and when to use what okay and this is also related to unique constraint and the third question is how many null values are allowed on a unique constraint in oracle okay so these questions i have already covered the link of these videos i'll give in the description if you want any questions to be covered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id but before that you can check whether a similar question has already been answered as part of the subscriber question series or as part of the interview question series if you are not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video and thanks a lot for watching this video if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for more technical videos and thanks a lot for watching this video